Uh, hi, good evening. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is just a short video to try to help out uh, people who are trying to build a Bedini motor. This is a Bedini coil that I just wound. It has uh, two windings. Uh, one of them is just a single strand of number 27 wire. The other one is a double strand of number 27 wire because I didn't have any heavier wire. So what I did was I just uh, pretended that uh, two strands of number 27 was one strand and then I used another strand and wound uh, about 800, 700 or 800 turns, uh, wound them all together on there. And then I soldered the two ends. Uh, well, you can see what I did there. Those are the, the, the doubled winding. And then that's the single winding coming out there. Okay, so I have two windings, one of thin wire and one of thick wire. Okay, and then uh, these, the, these are the output leads of the coil. Okay. And I've got it uh, <laughs> sorry about the light. I've got it hooked up to a mounted 2N2222A transistor here. Uh, this part of my Jewel Thief is just disconnected. I'm just using the transistor mount and I've got a neon across the em collector to emitter and a 1N 914 diode in there bypassing the base resistor and uh, and I've got it hooked up to a 12 volt power supply the schematic is exactly the Bedini North Pole motor okay and uh, here I have over here I have a drill and then that is a uh, a stack of NDB magnets mounted to the drill and secured with a little piece of heat shrink material. All right. I didn't have a chance to make a rotor, so this is uh, simulating the Bedini rotor motor. And I guess you can see that that neon is flashing. And not only is it flashing, but that sucker is incandescent. It's flashing kind of a purplish orange, which means that it's getting a really high voltage spike in there. So the idea is that as the magnet on your rotor rotates past the coil, it triggers the transistor, which causes a pulse. Ah. If I get too close, I get stuck. Okay, anyhow. I don't know if I'm feeling much of a drive impulse from there. This is... Uh, it's hard to tell with the system that I'm using. But there should be one, a little bit of a, either a drive impulse or a reduced attraction as the magnet comes by. For my core, for this uh, Bedini coil, I just have a bolt in there. That's just a, just a regular long cad plated bolt. Probably could use a better core. But as a proof of principle, you can see that uh, it does work, it does trigger, and... Uh, that's how you test it. Uh, oh, oh, okay, I wanted to show the uh, scope trace. Sorry I uh, didn't do this in the first take. But there's the baseline for the B trace uh, for this shot. And we'll be, we're using a 10x attenuated probe and we're at 5 volts per division. So each division now is going to be 50 volts. Okay, and I'm using the 12, 12 volt battery. 
One nice thing about the circuit is that it draws essentially no power when it's not being pulsed, so you don't even need an on-off switch. You can just kind of leave it on. Uh, so we've got the 12-volt battery, and then uh, here's the drill. And, uh, I'm going to be spinning it like that, and I hope that I can... <laughs> I hope I have enough hands to do this. Okay, here we go. Of course, it's not going to trigger. So what you what you would be seeing there clearly, if if we could get a good, good stable trigger on that. Display that at uh, 20 volts per division. That should give us a little bit greater signal. There we go. There's a decent triggered signal. So uh, what you're seeing there is a brief 12 volt turn on, and then when a turn it turns off, you get a massive negative going spike. And the magnitude of that spike, remember we're at 20 volts per division now, and it's off the screen down below. That's why the neon is flashing so brightly, and that is what will destroy your transistors if you have a, a reasonable amount of turns in your coil and you don't put a safety, transi or a safety neon in there. Sorry about the light. Okay, that's the scope trace. Thanks for